Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we are going to be making a dinosaur character. In this series I'll go through a detailed description of sculpting with lots of hints and tricks and we'll be baking all the textures and doing some painting all in Blender 2.8. This will be much more detailed than things like my Sculpt January postings so there'll be much more detail in terms of the sculpting techniques that I use and the sculpting workflow. I'm using Blender 2.8 and I'll try and keep in Blender 2.8 as much as I can. And my apologies for the audio, there's a slight tapping on the microphone. Hopefully that won't be too much of a distraction. So in my blog I talked about how you can build relationships with clients and this is a continuation of that but I'll be going through how I make the character and you can follow along and make your own dinosaur character if you like. But in continuing with the theme of working with clients and the client relationship, I'm going to just be testing out different shapes and different styles of dinosaur today. So this is basically getting the base shape. And it's a really good idea in any of your sculpts, if you can, and if you've got time, to sculpt out a few base shapes first before going into your final model. And when I say into your final model, I mean adding that detail, so the second and third levels of detail. Most models that I do have three levels I would say. So the base model, then sort of fleshing out that model and then adding the minor details. With the base model it does vary in how detailed you want to go but for these first base models I'm going to be relatively relaxed on a very low detail when I'm sculpting in order to get just rough almost sketches of shapes. So to start with I get my cube and I subdivide it five times so control five will give me five subdivisions as you can see there and then I can apply that and I'm ready to sculpt. Now I can go across into sculpt mode and I'll pull out my brushes and I'll get my snake hook brush and I will turn Dyn Topo on. Actually before turning it on it's a good idea to go into your object settings or your object data and go to UV maps and remove the UV map that should stop that warning message coming up. So if I click Dyn Topo now it shouldn't come up and I'm going to use constant detail to start off with. I generally stick to constant detail because I like to know how far I'm going. And let's just click on our cube and see what detail level that is. It's actually a bit high, so we didn't need to subdivide it that many times, so I'm gonna to go to 10. Resize my brush and start pulling this shape around. So I will time-lapse some of this, but I'll try not to time-lapse it too fast. And I'll just pull around the shapes. I'll put my reference images up on screen and I'm sort of creating a few dinosaur shapes and we'll see how we get on. When I'm using the grab brush or the snake hook brush I should say in this case um, I tap away at it so I'm tapping it out. If I pull out like this it's difficult to control um, so I tap the well in my case the screen maybe your case the graphics tablet it's tougher with a mouse this and I'm just working on getting a shape of a dinosaur. Now I've been looking at my reference images and at the moment I've not got them up in front of me because I won't, don't want to be uh, blinded by them and just copy a style. I want to do my own style. I wouldn't really suggest that for many beginners. Um, it's good to actually sort of try and mimic what other people have done as a beginner. Um, but uh, when you're a little bit more experienced, not saying that I'm super experienced or anything, um, but when you're a little bit, when you're a little bit more experienced, you can then uh, try and go away from your ref reference images a bit more. And once I've got a basic idea, then I will go back to my reference images and think, oh, actually, maybe I'll do the mouth like this or the nose like this, whatever it might be. Especially when you're doing things like arms. Um, Really, I should have them sticking out this way for the base model, and then I can pose them later. But um, tapping like I'm doing here gives you more control, I would say. But now they're looking really blobby because I messed that up. So if you mess them up too much, then you need to bring down the detail, so the resolution, and I can tap on this, smooth it out. And in 2.8, we get this little glitch here. It's nothing to worry about because if I go into, let's say, layout mode, and then back into sculpt, it disappears. Remember to put your detail level back up and I'll do a bit more properly now. So make sure you're zooming in and out quite regularly and circling around your character often. I 
I'm using the shift button an awful lot, so that's the smooth button, just to um, even out the shape so when I pull that something out you can just smooth it out. And if you've got a low resolution it's easy to do that. Now you might be tempted for something like the hands to up the resolution amount, but it really isn't worth it. Just get a really rough idea of what the hands are going to look like at this stage. And hopefully they're going to look a bit better than this by the end of it. It's really important not to be tempted to up the resolution too early. If you ever need to, you can use the inflate tool as well. So if it's a bit too pointy, you just get the inflate tool and inflate those areas for things like the fingers. Although it's a bit wayward this is. So I haven't really moved brushes yet, I'm still using the brush tool and just occasionally using the inflate to um, pull geometry out. So I could use it on the arm for example just to thicken it out if I want to. Maybe the same with these feet. So there we go, I've got a really basic uh, model there. And at this point it's a nice low resolution so I can go to layout mode and just duplicate that across, shift D, duplicate it in the x-axis and then I've got one base model where I can show that to my client, in this case Andy, and say do you want this sort of shape or do you want him standing up, so the next one is going to be standing up. I've just remembered to turn my shortcut keys on. I downloaded that the other day. I think it came, from, I can't remember who made that, but it came from a Blender Nation article. So you can look up sh um, screencast keys or um, shortcut VUR, I think it's called, something like that. And now you can see my what I'm doing down there. <laughs> Looking pretty dreadful at the moment. Okay, now we're sort of back to a reasonable looking uh, dinosaur. So we've got a nice starting base there, one for standing, one for sitting, and I'm going to copy this out and start doing a bit more detail to things like the face and then I'm going to really change it around a few times, maybe offer um, four or five different ideas for this character. So this one will have huge eyes. And these might not work, they might look absolutely horrendous, which it sort of does at the moment. But this is just a way of like sketching thumbnails that artists do. I've still not upped the resolution, I don't see any need to just yet, because we can still just make out the detail at the moment. Okay, so we've got a really basic one there. I might have to smarten these up a bit later on, but I'm just getting some ideas and sketching them out at the moment.
Crease brush is great for just identifying line areas, although it's a bit more of a detailed tool, so be a bit careful with how uh, detailed you're going to go with the crease brush. Now I'm going to put a tongue in here, and this is a bit awkward using the snake hook tool, but we'll try it out. If it doesn't work, I can just add one in later. But can you see how I'm tapping on the screen? Um, for me, the screen, you, you might be the tablet, and just gently pulling it into position. So just gently tapping. Also, the rake tool uh, is quite useful here. So there's the new topology rake as well, but the rake tool down here uh, will pull it in the direction that you're pulling your brush. Hopefully that makes sense. A bit difficult to describe, but it's uh, really handy. And someone told me that what, during Sculpt January, which is very useful. Looks a bit more like a dog at the moment, but um, we can change that about and make him look a bit more fun. Uh, we could, um, because it's a dinosaur, we could give him um, spikes on the back, a tail, uh, like a stegosaurus, I'm thinking, sort of weird spiky bits. What are they called? They're not called spikes, they're called something else, but hopefully you know what I mean. When using the snake hook tool, it's really important to keep moving around your object and see which direction you are definitely pulling in. If I pull out here and then move around, it might be back or forward more than I think, you see. So now I'm just going to time lapse the last couple. Hopefully you get the idea of the techniques that I'm using and why I'm setting up the base shapes like this. I'll now send these off to Andy and he can then choose which one he likes or give me some pointers about where he'd want to go with this character. In the next episode, I'll be taking the one he chooses or adapting it and putting some more detail. So basically the second level of detail in the next episode.